فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أتي الله أتي الرسول وأولى الأمر منكم and I was a reminder for myself and abdukul ajis wa da'ifu miskeen wa zalim wa jahan and but for the grace of Allah that we're still in existence and alhamdulillah Allah gave us long life to reach to the holy month of Muharram and all of its days and nights which are blessed and alhamdulillah what we have now words of Sayyidina Darwish Muhammad, Nashbandi Shaykh, Shahadat of Sayyidina Zain al Abideen. Tomorrow night we'll witness the, that holy night of the 25th of Muharram, the 24th night will be tomorrow inshaAllah where the Shahadat of Sayyidina Zain al Abideen the survivor of Karbala and carrying the light of Imam and Hussain to the next generation and progeny of the Imams that Allah safeguarded the deen and the line of Ahlul Bayt and the realities of Ahlul Bayt through Sayyidina Zayn al Abideen Imam as Sajjad that Allah address us, bless us from the immensity of that reality and that to grant us the love of the blessed household of Prophet and the holy companions of Sayyidina Muhammad and all those whom follow the way of ishq and love and muhabbat and good character. Awliyaullah fi samahi wa fil ard inshaAllah. We talked a lot on Saturday and inshaAllah maybe we go a little bit into the feedback before we just keep putting more and more talks out there see if people are absor absorbing and if I'm absorbing also from these realities inshaAllah. Do we have any, anything from the people out online inshaAllah let's address everybody online and bless everybody and thank you for all your, your participation, comments, postings, mashaAllah it's uh, they're everywhere mashaAllah posting and, and spreading the teachings and getting blocked by Facebook and alhamdulillah. <laughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa this question is related to your talk about Rabb. Yes. Uh, could you please help me understand Surah Al Kahf, Ayah 38? But as for me, He is Allah, my Lord, and I will never associate anyone with. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. With my Lord in worship, it seems to me as this ayah directly refers to Allah as my Rabb and that no one else should be equal to that position. Is that the correct understanding of Rabb based on the teachings of the tariqah? No. No. Who's asking that kind of question? Because they know that's not our teaching, yeah that's not good, good manners to find fault in what's being taught. You find for clarification the questions not to challenge the shaykh, that's not a good question. But no it's not because the worshipness is only for Allah and when we described Rabb is an authority. So if you even go into Middle Eastern culture we've described maybe thousand times, the language is used differently in the Middle East. So the house you call Rabb al-Bayt, the governor you call Rabb al-Shar. So its correct translation is authority, it's not the creator. So the highest authority is Allah. 
So if you understand how Wahhabis work and I don't know if the questioner is a Wahhabi or propagating Wahhabi teachings is they play with language and they use deception in language and this is not good, not correct in Islam. So they say the Prophet described, music is haram. Then they say, why are you making nasheeds? So they played with the word music. So this is a deception and deceitful character to know that zikr is not music, zikr is hamd and praising. Music is a concert and probably the concert that you go to in Riyadh, that's haram. So these people play with words, Rab is not the creator. In, in Middle Eastern language, I don't know if Urdu but it's Rabb al-Bayt, who's the, the Lord and the authority of this house, house of lords. So it means these are the people of authority and Allah uses Rabb in Surat al-Yusuf. So our students are taught to read Alif Lam Ra to open up the realities of Rububiya in which Allah describes a, a dialogue with Sayyidina Yusuf who's a prophet of Allah about your Lord making reference to his king. That don't betray your Lord who's, who did good to you. So throughout Surah Yusuf is a reference to Lordship and the Wahhabis played with the translation for, for other people in other languages. Those who are not <coughs> versed in Arabic they made, they made their deceit through tafsirs and translations. So then they translated Rabb as Lordship and Divinity. But actually Lordship means authority and that's where Allah asks a Prophet of Allah that, don't betray your Rabb the King Malik Aziz in reference in Surah to Yusuf. So why would Allah create a shirk against Himself? Because it had nothing to do with the Creator, it had to do with an authority. So the highest authority is Allah that's why Atiya Allah, Atiya Rasul wa ulul amri minkum. These are levels of authority. The highest authority always in the deen is Allah Same for sharia that when you want to make a jurisprudence and legal judgment you go to the highest authority which are the words of Allah So they go to Qur'an. From Qur'an they have to see how Prophet used that authority so then they go towards the hadith and that's how they form jurisprudence. They take Allah's authority the Qur'an then they take the authority of Prophet from Atiya Rasul. They say, how did Prophet translate this ayah in reference to this legal subject and then, wa ulul amri minkum and then how did our pious predecessors, more pious and more noble than ourselves, how is their case law? And as a result of these three, Atiya Allah, Atiya Rasul, Ulul Amri Minkum, jurisprudence is then made. And they don't contradict the pious predecessors. Wahhabis, they don't acknowledge the pious predecessors and they think with their little pea heads they understand more than pious predecessors and they negate the jurisprudence of the big imams, the imams of the madhab and they make their own and they say that now the gate of fatwas is open for everybody can be a mufti and imam and make their fatwas. And they don't make reference to what the ulul am ruled. So they take Qur'an, hadith and make their own ruling. Many now even say, we don't need hadith, we are going to go straight to Qur'an which again against sharia. Why? Because nobody's at the level of Prophet to understand the words of Allah That's extremely dangerous. 
when people try to interpret the words of Allah on their own. And any reference to Surat Al-Kahf is all about guidance and following guidance. And the highest authority and the only one to be worshipped is Allah And anytime Allah don't take awliya as your saviors and your gods, this, this is in reference to anyone countering Allah's authority. There is no wali, there's no authority from anyone to counter the authority of Allah If Allah says something haram they cannot say it's halal. And if something is halal they cannot say it's haram. So no one that's when Allah makes reference to that, that you're taking this people as an authority over Allah's authority. So we have many talks even in the talks of healing the shaykhs of perfection or been taught by perfection they don't even try to heal outside of Allah's authority. Means if Allah gave somebody a sickness they're in no position to try to take that away but to understand Allah's wisdom in which Allah wants the person sick for wisdom. What's the wisdom? So they come towards guidance. So then teach them how to build themselves and how to fish. We don't hand out fishes to people but teach them how to bring themselves up in maturity so that Allah will be pleased with them and Allah will take away the sickness, Allah take away the difficulty and many times that's the way of authority. So you can't enrich somebody whom Allah has put into poverty because then you're making yourself an authority over Allah and that's when you go to the gypsies, oh you don't have money give this wazifa, do like this, send like this you're going to get some money. That's not correct because there's no authority over Allah's authority. So means then the shaykh's responsibility is that, I recommend you start doing this khidmat. I recommend that you read these awrads, why? So that Allah will be pleased with you. If Allah's pleased with you, Malik al-Aziz in which nobody can stop then that sifat begins to open for the servant to receive their sustenance and receive their blessings, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. What is the starting point to open the knowledge we are reading and listening to? How do we know if these knowledges are opening up for us? The meditation, try to make your connection and make the tafakkur and contemplation. MashaAllah now everybody's agreed that uh, meditation is important. So they're all talking about now making tafakkur, making meditation. So this is the, the key to everything is making your connection. Once you've made that connection then slowly, slowly the seeker begins to progress because of the companionship. Allah ordering, wa kunu ma sadiqeen itaqullah, be, be conscious of God. So do you have a consciousness in your heart? And then Allah's ordering in the second part of the ayat al kareem is, wa kunu ma sadiqeen, is that keep the company of truthful servants. But Allah doesn't care for dunya so that can't be only a dunya issue where I have to go and look for physical pious people, how would I judge them, how would I know? So then Allah must be making reference to something spiritual. That connect your heart with spiritual people and you begin to witness them in your heart, you begin to feel the presence of their heart. You're not worshipping them, you're worshipping only Allah but when you connect with them you keep their companionship and this is the order of Allah Wa kunu ma sadiqeen, keep the company of truthful people, keep them in the presence of your soul, keep them in the presence of your reality and physically if you can be around them alhamdulillah even better. Or you try to keep the company of at least people whom are trying to do good physically so these are all the dalils and proofs that Allah has given for tariqahs that keep your, your spiritual presence with these people so that you can learn and understand. And even in the face of great deceit 
and, and falsehood that, that come from Arab mouths. Not all Arabs but the ones who are Arab and they know their language and they know and they use their language as a means of great deceit and deception and their ability to translate. And this is the danger that you get from their types of teaching that they know these words, they know what, what they are, they know that riba is not business, it's not ijara, it's not all of these faculties of work. It has to deal with usury but they fool people. Then the other people who follow them they propagate their teachings and say, yes. But then they have ijara in their contracts and they say, no ijara is okay. Any type of profit margin is okay, any type of business transaction is okay, excessive margins is riba. So when you go and travel and it's ten dollars for a taxi but all of a sudden when traffic comes it becomes two hundred dollars, that's riba. And if you're in a Muslim country you tell them, you know that you, you went from ten dollars to bring me here, now you say it's traffic and it becomes hundred dollars to go back you're committing a riba and they think, no, no it's not interest. I said, sir you don't even understand what riba is. Riba is any time you're excessively gouging somebody and it's usury. You went from ten and into hundred because you wanted to take benefit of a, of a difficulty is riba. The credit card is riba but they don't ever talk about that, they talk about home mortgages because they want you to use their banking. So this is a deception that's why we, we call dajjal is a deceit. We're in a time of immense deceit from those whom they know the language and they deceive people and amongst them alhamdulillah they're very good people. But the, the great amount of deceit is because the ones whom have this native tongue and how they're propagating its translations and people become lost. So they're the ones who spread music is haram. Yeah music is haram but nasheed is not music, it's hamd and praisings and Allah and His Rasul <clears throat> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa <clears throat> Is the hand of Allah being on the hands of awliya related in any way to the hand of Imam Ali salam and the Sunnah of the Ring? Yeah, I think we talked about that. That's exactly what we talked about. That when the final state, why Imam Ali is at the final position, not the first position, that you have to be dressed by the companions and their realities. <coughs> at that time, Imam Ali when the ring is given, it's given to an authorized representative. Similar to the ring of Sayyidina Sulaiman in which the keys of the kingdom are given to the servant. And the verses that are re recited for the bayat is in reference to that reality. That when Prophet put his hand upon the hand of Imam Ali and Allah's hand upon all their hands means that this is the hand of power, the hand of authority. And this is the secret of Lam Alif and Lam Jalala in which Allah dresses that servant with a Zulfiqar with these immense realities because the companions have dressed the servant, blessed the servant and all those talks that we talked about Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq dressing and supporting the servant. We have people who've emailed that they held their asa and began to ask for the madad of Imam uh, for Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq as salam and they felt immense light and, and, and warmth and energy come to them. So it means the holy companions must dress the servant, begin to prepare and bless the servant, then the finale is for the ring of the kingdom to come. And the one whom accompanies that authority is the Most High and this is the reality of the name of 
Ta'ala, the Most High and Allah gave this honour and this dress and this name to Imam Ali Salam. So it has a significance in the oceans of power. So this is the order. Now can you get the hand of Imam Ali Salam first? Yes, but that's a different reality. You're not going to have been dressed by all that needed to be dressed to give in the keys of the kingdom and the reality of what the ring truly represents, inshaAllah. <clears throat> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Alaikum As Salaam During our struggle we go through many failures and take many losses. How to handle all the failures and losses and keep moving on? InshaAllah life is filled with what you can't call failures <clears throat> but considered struggles. It's not the they say it's not the time of success that makes a person or makes somebody to be of a valuable nature but it's the amount of times that they got up from when they were knocked down in life. And that's what makes the quality of the character that the amount of times you've been knocked down in life and you keep getting up. Because our life is about struggle, it's not about success because you don't know what success is. You may deem something a failure but Allah didn't want you to have that but He wanted you to think that you were going to have that and you struggle for that because it's not your business. So when you're in a place and you don't like it, you're doing something you don't like it, you're, you're this and they're always talking about the past and why this happened, why that happened. You have it all wrong, you're still your tariqa understanding is completely incorrect. You are exactly where your Lord placed you and He's going to try you and knock you and knock you and waiting to see which one will take you down. So like in a boxing match Allah wants to see if this is my prize fighter, we'll send somebody slap him around. If in the first round he got hit and went and stayed down is definitely not Allah's prize fighter. But if he got down and the opponent was not what he planned, the location was not what he planned, nothing was what he planned but this guy keeps getting up. They knock him, keeps getting up, knock him, he keeps getting up. That's what Allah wants in life. So people who complain about where they are, what they are, what they happened, what was this, what was… always talking about like the past like an old grandmother, that's not a heroic and noble character. A noble character is they understand they are exactly where Allah wants them to be and they have to struggle through any type of difficulty that Allah puts them through and they have to have this love and reverence for Allah that they love Allah, Allah loves them so it means that they are exactly where He wants them to be. Until they have such a strong tawakkul and reliance upon Allah that Allah moves them left and right like Ashab al Kaf. When Allah's describing that in the sun was getting near them, they would turn. How they turn when nobody's there? Because perfect, perfect servanthood is like a dead body in which you don't keep thinking everything, but your body moves and reacts according to the way Allah wants it. But you never get to that level unless you have authority. So fight your lower authority, all your vices and bad characteristics until Allah introduces the authority of the heavens and those whom are authority authorized in this, on this earth. And you have to follow the authority of the earth. If you drive too fast and the police pull you over and go and try to tell them that you only listen to Allah. You'll end up in a jail in Guantanamo maybe. So it means you obey the authority wherever Allah put somebody authorized because Allah authorized that person. When, the, when we live with that understanding then Allah begins to introduce us into the authority of the heavens. 
And as that person begins to become elevated, they have a strong level of faith and they know that Allah is with them and whatever happens Allah that's the way He wants it. There's no mistakes, only opportunities to learn. But if you got a rope behind you of the past means your shaitan's rope is on your neck. And if you're worried about the future, his second rope is on your neck, you're not going anywhere, you're not flying and you're not progressing, you're probably becoming paranoid and mentally disturbed. You have to fight that system in which you're relying on Allah and you're exactly where Allah wants you to be, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam If I'm on the lowest level, can I still try to meditate or should I wait until I've regulated more zikr and the daily awrad? No, the meditation starts right away. Get the book or read the website articles on how to make your tafakkur and contemplation. There's no waiting because you don't know what comes tomorrow, it may get worse. Without your tafakkur and contemplation you, you may not get any energy and you may go down and spiral downward. Now the energy becoming worse, difficulties becoming worse. So unless people have that connection <coughs> and make that understanding then it's hard to call upon your own energy if you're in quicksand. So what happens when you're in quicksand is that you need a rope. So Allah says, hold tight to the rope of Allah So what is that rope? Atiullah, Atiya Rasul wa ulul amri minkum. Allah saying, Atta to, to rely on them, to listen to them. Atta is a strong word, is obey Allah obey the Messenger of Allah and obey those in authority. So that becomes a rope for us is obedience, our life is about obedience. Wajib al-taqleed, it's for Ahl sunnah wa jama'ah it's wajib, mandatory for taqleed to follow. And this was the way of Prophet following Sayyidina Jibra'il to show the humility and the holy companions following Prophet because this is the way, this is the sunnah and the way of Prophet and those whom followed the companions and those whom followed and followed the followers of the companions. So this is our system, if you go outside of that you lose all sense of guidance and that becomes the Wahhabi ideology to bring misguidance and disconnected people and we'll see where it got them. As Salaamu Alaikum Beloved Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa Just wanted to say thank you for sharing your knowledges with us. By the grace of Allah, you lifted me up from so many negative acts and characteristics. Thank you so much. Walaykum As Salaam wa Allah bless you. As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa what is the reality of deja vu? Deja vu? <clears throat> I don't know. But anything that you think you've seen before, you have to understand that it's all been written. It's not, it's not being written as we move. So it's not like oh, Allah's writing and oh, oh he just made a right step, he made left step, he's made a right step, he made left step and laying tracks before the choo-choo train knows where it's going. It's all been laid, it's all been laid down, all the tracks have been put out, the train has been made, everybody already travelled everything and it's already ended. So this life has already taken place, it began and it ended. For us we're living it now day by day. So it's already been written, everything has already transpired and this is the great test for people to understand what is destiny. 
what has Allah written for somebody, whether it's good or bad you have to accept it. Why is that a part of faith? Because it comes to the deeper consciousness that Allah's not, we're not acting and Allah reacting. So you can't build a building like that, so I'm going to build this 30-storey building but I have no idea what's on the second floor. Let me start building first floor. Oh yeah, I, I want to go now second floor. Maybe I'll go a little bit crooked this way to the third floor. Means everything had to already been written, designed, signed off and then now built. And we're living in a building that has already been built. But for us it's manifesting on our time. But we know through spiritual training if you leave the physical realm and begin to use your soul in the world of light, you can go back in time where everything already transpired. They connect with the shaykhs regardless if they're living or not or when they were living because in the world of light they're right in front of them. There's no time in the world of light. You enter into the room and this is the world of light, all the shaykhs are sitting there. It's not hard, it's not old, you don't have to go on travel to a location. The world of light is right there with the timeless dimension. Now going forward is no different. If you were going forward in the association of light, what would be the difference? Events have already transpired. Those people whom are talked about or discussed by Allah they have already been in existence. So in the world of light they're also there because everybody is already in that world of light if Allah wrote a destiny for them. Once you enter that room they're all there, there's no time anymore. So you can talk to Imam Mahdi Salaam and then see the events that would be transpiring. And if you had an eye and a heart from that reality they can look and they can see. They can see what's going to transpire upon this earth and where it's going to transpire and what will be left and what event. So we have to understand and think from the world of light. It's very different than the laws of the world of form. <coughs> laws of form based all on time but the world of light has no time. <clears throat> That's the importance of reaching to the world of light so that you don't live a physical material life and that you don't think on a physical and material mentality that the world of light mentality is a far greater reality with infinite capacity and infinite realities. <clears throat> and those who live on this physical plane very limited. What did we talk about Saturday night? Nobody went into any of the issues from Saturday night, just challenge what is rub. Zisha were you there on Saturday? Did you watch from home? <coughs> what do we talk about on Saturday inshaAllah? It's very deep. Did we talk about that on Saturday? Or maybe that's what you heard on Saturday, I don't know if we talked about that. <laughs> it's good everybody gets in their heart what they need. Alhamdulillah. We talked about alaq, what did we talk about? about Sayyidina Fatima Tizari and the, the realities of creation coming into existence. 
because these knowledges are not easy to understand. So when people are seeing the short videos it make the Wahhabis go crazy. And that's why the that's why the they come into these sites be careful to filter them out cuz their their kindergarten understanding is 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 a difficulty. And that's why Surah Al-Kahf describes that don't ask questions until you're asked to ask because what little people know will make them to be confused. So why Sayyidina Musa with immense knowledges had a difficult time with Sayyidina Khidr And he laid down rules that, don't ask until I tell you that you can ask. And from what little you understand of these realities, you're not going to have patience with this. And it requires then what? An ability to have silence and patience. So when your mind starts to begin buzzing that, oh this doesn't make sense, this might shut your mind off. In the face of the shaykh your mind has no relevance and put your heart into motion and begin to build your heart and build your connection because they're going off-roading, they're taking you into a dimension that you have no way to understand, not through the faculty of a little brain. Brain has no capacity, the heart is what has an infinite capacity. Imagine what you're trying to take knowledge from like one book that you own. You went in life and you bought one book and you said, it's not in my book. But the shaykh has the internet but his internet is universal. Any subject they google they have access to its knowledges. Can those two people sit and talk? Every time you talk to him it's like say, hold on, let me read my one little book that I own, where is it in here? Are you kidding me man? That one book in reference to something that has an unlimited access, what is the capacity of the heart of Prophet It's just an analogy of an internet where somebody would one time have a book and say, everything has to be in the book and, oh it's not in this book, what am I going to do? Well that's your dilemma, that's why Allah is when you're accompanying these people of realities, don't make reference to your book, actually put it aside and, and try to open your internet, your infinite capacity of your heart into a world of light. That's why they say, well one drop, one drop, one drop is how many drops? They say three shaykh, I said, no it's drops, it goes into one. So in, in circumstances one plus one plus one is not always going to be three because it's one plus what? So you have to have the element, is it something of a material element then it would be three. If it's a spiritual element then it would be one. But somebody with their mind is not going to understand that, that's why the way is based on the heart. The first zikr, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah means when you come to them shut your head off. If you're going to come through your head there's your one little book and that's you're going to be happy with that, you probably will run away and keep your one little book when it gets too, too intense. But the, the path is based on a difficulty. So the shaykh then has to keep teaching, teaching, teaching and hoping the people are meditating. Don't just take the teaching and then let's go to the next subject, next go to the next is that as soon as it comes you have to spend the week meditating on that subject. What was he talking about? That how did they get to that? How did the, the, the sifat of khaliq Allah go to anyone else? Because all ulama say that what keeps Allah is the creator is creating. But then Allah gives them a code, khalaq al-insana min alaq. I created insan min Muhammadan nur, nur Muhammadi min. And they say, no shaykh that means with. I said, but forget Allah doesn't care for with, what does with and grammar have to do with Allah? Everything must be exactly, precisely coded by Allah there's not a grammar school up there that min means with but the mim and the noon must be significant to Allah 
that he created this creation min this Muhammadan nur with a alaq. And again dunya says alaq is a clot like a leech that bites into the womb to hold its position. But this is dunya, what Allah cares for dunya? In the world of light what does alaq mean? Ain lam qaf. So these are now the elements that Allah used, ingredients that Allah used for this word alaq. So these six verses are the opening of everyone's heart because this is the opening of the command from Prophet Iqra. Sayyidina Jibreel came and pressed three times and opened these realities that Prophet physicality to reconnect with spirituality and let's go. Now start bringing your flow of information upon this earth. So those are very deep to contemplate, contemplate that, that this light of creation, of course it's all from Allah because that's the authority most high. But Allah doesn't want you to stop there, so it's no doubt it's from Allah but you've oversimplified it. Allah wants to know that, uh, wants us to know, no it's with a knowledge, it's with a Divine knowledge that every creature is coming into existence. Why? There must be a ilm and a knowledge within its womb that giving the authority of the angels to bring elements together, to bring a creation out of any creature, any living creature that coming into existence, the angels that are putting things together by a knowledge. Who's the authority of that knowledge? Of all knowledge. It's Prophet because it comes from Muhammadun Rasulullah Prophet is the huruf. Every letter of the huruf is made from the light of Sayyidina Muhammad So alaq that Allah want to give the servant ancient knowledges and to make them to be an alim. That same alaq, if Allah grants them ancient knowledges, they're on their way to be abd. Because Allah gave again the ayn in abd. Allah has to give them a lamb, a tongue of truth. One that they listen to the tongues of truth and don't listen to any other tongue, it's going to make doubt in you. They bought a taweez, gave a taweez to everybody, family came back and started arguing with them. Now they have doubt emailing, if you have doubt then you've lost yourself already. How do you have doubt in five seconds? That was too easy. Don't listen to other tongues, you're walking on water. How are you going to, to survive dajjal? with deception and deceit coming everywhere, with every tongue will make you confuse. So become like a flute, every, every tongue that comes to you make you confused then what kind of person is that? They have no istiqam and no firmness, why? Because they're not meditating. In the doctor's school it tells you what? You're not meditating. Your, your knowledge and your understanding of what we're teaching is like a flower on a rock. You just hear this, then you hear somebody else, then you come back and say, I doubt what you just said. This is not the, somebody who's learning, somebody who learns their, their connection is stru, so strong with the shaykhs. They feel them and they see them in the world of light and when the shaykh is talking, their understanding from their soul burned into their soul and they know it is a truth in their entire reality. They didn't just hear this, then hear that, then hear this, then hear that, then come back and say, I'm confused now. That's not the, the, the lamb Allah is talking about. The lamb is when your heart has been opened. So when someone talks like that, 
Your understanding is what? They're not making their tafakkur. They're a flower on the rock, gulisangam. We have the song, gulisangam. Why? Because you're like, it's nice, you know, flowers look nice, but a flower on a rock is going to wash away with the first rain, first test it comes, that one's gone too. But the one whom's deep, you know, like a pine tree, their strong connection when they hear the realities is burnt into their soul that they can repeat it because it's coming out of their soul. Whatever we learn from our shaykhs, it's coming with no book, no even notes. From subject to subject to subject there's not a single note. How? Because it's burned into the receiver, into the heart, into the soul. It's coming from the depth of their soul. So then Allah gives them that reality of the lamb in which they adhere to the, the tongues of truth and that their tongue to inherit the reality of a tongue of truth. And all of its power coming from Qur'an. So this ancient knowledge that coming from this authorized lisan which is the power of Qur'an, that's why Allah described Qur'an, if there's a book that can revive the dead, this is it. Means all life and death and all authorities coming out of Holy Qur'an, which is what? Atiullah. Who's bringing you Qur'an? Atiya Rasul. Qur'an is coming from where this authority? You had the paper printed with, uh, with not appropriate ink, that's Mus'haf. You think that's where the power is coming from? The Qur'an you have on ink is, is from what? In time of Imam Mahdi they open the Qur'an will be gone. It's not printed with saffron and, and things that are pure. So the Mus'af is not the one, the power. The Qur'an that emanates from Manzil Qur'an, the house of Qur'an is the heart of Prophet From that lisan every knowledge is coming out to the authorized lisans to his authorized tongues and the knowledges of Qur'an are coming out and then this is the knowledge of creation coming into existence. Every creation is coming into existence with an authority, it's been written that it can come, been given a knowledge and the angels completed the knowledge and brought that form into existence. From the smallest to the largest plants coming and planets coming into existence, planets going out of existence is by an authority. So this is immense. So Allahu wa khaliq bi haqqa Fatima tazari salam. So means they have then immense realities, immense lights, immense blessings, inshaAllah. Subhan rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaam ala al-mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen <coughs> bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. As alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.